During the Vietnam War, the U.S. intelligence community was very serious about keeping tabs on all large Vietnamese troop movements. They had been surprise attacked one too many times, and the CIA and Army Intel did a very good job on keeping tabs on all troop movements. So as you can imagine, they were very alarmed when out of nowhere, the 1st, 3rd, and 7th North Vietnamese Army Divisions completely vanished out of thin air in the middle of the jungle somewhere near the border of Cambodia. The 1st, 3rd, and 7th Army Divisions made up a total of 30 thousand enemy troops that just completely disappeared no recon planes no recon forces on the ground could find them anywhere they just vanished and their last known location was alarmingly close to a u.s special operations base so the cia was very concerned that these troops were preparing an assault on the base so they very quickly started working on a plan to send a sog team in to try and find this large group of enemy troops. The CIA then handed the mission off to Mac V SOG Spike Team Idaho, a spike team composed of six commandos, two Green Berets, and four local mercenaries. And the recon team was led by John Stryker Meyer, the legendary Green Beret. Their job was to enter into the jungle and find the 30,000 enemy troops without being detected, make note of their location and the direction they appear to be heading in, and just general notes on what it appears that they might be doing in this location, and then exfil safely from the area. And as a bonus, if they were able to capture one enemy troop that they could get some information out of, that would be great. And if going after 30,000 enemy troops with just six men wasn't enough, the SOG commandos were further hindered by the fact that they couldn't call in fixed wing close air support because the State Department had imposed very strict rules of engagement for the area of operations. On Thanksgiving morning, while most Americans were at home with their families enjoying a nice turkey dinner, Spike Team Idaho inserted into the jungle and began patrolling towards where they believed the North Vietnamese Army might be. And after just a few minutes, they spotted campfires in the distance and started to move in their direction. Spike Team Idaho soon found itself inside a huge North Vietnamese camp, but thankfully the camp was empty. So the commandos quickly started snapping pictures and searching for documents and maps and just any form of intelligence that could be useful. And while most of the commandos were focused on treasure hunting, the team's point man, an indigenous mercenary, literally sensed the enemy's approach. He couldn't see anything, couldn't hear anything. He just literally could feel that it was time to get the heck out of there. And thankfully, the team leader, John Stryker Meyer, trusted his teammate with his life and took his word for it and made the decision to exfiltrate immediately. But as they were leaving camp, hundreds of North Vietnamese troops poured into view from seemingly out of nowhere. Before long, it was clear that they were coming straight at them from both the north and south. Their point man had been completely right about his feeling. Spike Team Idaho was now facing an utterly overwhelming enemy force. If they were going to have any chance to survive, they needed to get out of there in a hurry. Thankfully, these SOG operators knew exactly how to set up their loadouts for these kinds of situations. They were not new to running away from very large groups of enemy forces. I'll put a picture of John Stryker Meyer on screen for you right now that gives you a good idea of what their loadouts would have looked like. You can see he has a ton of of frag grenades all on his chest. SOG operators would carry an insane amount of ammunition along with a ton of frag grenades and claymore mines. Now, the ammo is a bit self-explanatory. They were quite often facing off against very large enemy forces with just a few men on their side. So they need to have a lot of ammo to stand any chance. But the frag grenades and claymores were actually hilariously genius. They would 
run away through the jungle from the enemies that were chasing them and be able to just grab frag grenades off their chest, pull the pin, and throw it over their shoulder behind them to slow down the enemy that was trying to chase them. They could also stop for a second placed on a claymore mine and then keep on running and that way they would there would just be stuff blowing up behind them constantly slowing down the enemy while they were running through the jungle and setting up their loadouts like that absolutely saved spike team idaho's lives this day as they ran through the jungle they would throw frag grenades over their shoulder and plant claymore mines and attempt to slow down the enemy's pursuit but unfortunately in this situation the enemy's numbers were just so huge that even when they would take out a large group of enemies with one frag grenade more enemies would just appear out of nowhere to take their place but the spike team managed to reach their landing zone and dug in tight waiting for the helicopters to exfiltrate them. But at this point, the enemy soldiers were almost on top of them. The commandos continued to throw as many grenades as they could in the enemy's direction, attempting to hold them off just long enough for the helicopters to arrive. And literally just as the spike team was about to be overrun by the enemy, a group of UH-1P Hueys from the Air Force's 20th Special Operations Squadron, nicknamed the Green Hornets, arrived to pick up the SOG operators. The Green Hornets immediately opened fire on the enemy with their miniguns and M60 machine guns. The Green Hornets were able to completely halt the enemy's advance just long enough for the SOG commandos to board the helicopters. And just like a scene from a movie as the helicopters were flying away with the SOG operators, the enemy forces immediately filled the entire area beneath them, giving the SOG operators a good overhead view of just how huge the enemy force they were fighting against was. And with that, the mission was a success. Miraculously, all six members of Spike Team Idaho made it back home with just some minor bumps and bruises. They successfully located all 30,000 members of the enemy force and were able to get a ton of intel and photographs from their precious moments in the base before the enemy arrived. They sadly weren't able to make it back with a captured enemy soldier, uh, but I think the intel they were able to get out of the base made up for it. And personally, if I was on an insane mission like that, I would definitely retire as soon as I got back to base. And I would expect most humans to at least need a week off before they went back on another mission. But these SOG operators were so crazy, they literally went on another suicide mission the next day. These guys were something else. But that's going to be it for today's video, guys. That is how a six-man MACV SOG team took on 30,000 enemy troops on Thanksgiving Day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for checking it out. Make sure you let me know what you think of it down in the comment section. And make sure you recommend any other stories you may have in mind for future videos. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll talk to you all later.